All right, in this video, we're going to go through this problem from midterm three last fall. And you're going to see that when we find the, the roots of the characteristic polynomial of, of this matrix A, in other words, when we find the eigenvalues of A, it's going to have I's in them. I meaning the square root of negative one, right? So we're going to have complex eigenvalues, and therefore we're going to also have complex eigenvectors. But don't worry about it. A lot of students freak out about complex eigen stuff. Uh, but really, it's just the same exact process. Um, it's just the algebra is a little more tricky because you have to work with um, I's and stuff. So I'm assuming you have that background. Uh, but let's just jump into this. So part A says, find the characteristic polynomial f of lambda of A. And so in order to get this problem right, you have to know what is the characteristic polynomial. How do you find that? Well, the characteristic polynomial, if you remember, is just the polynomial you get when you find the determinant of A minus lambda I. So f of lambda, the characteristic polynomial, is equal to the determinant of a minus lambda i. In this case, i is the identity matrix, the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So let's do that. So what is a minus lambda i? What is that matrix? Sorry, I have a, I have a cold, so I have a stuffy nose. So you get 1 minus lambda, 1, negative 1, 1 minus lambda. Okay, so we want to find the determinant of that. So then we can say the determinant of that, f of lambda, that's the characteristic polynomial. So the determinant, remember, you just do this product minus this product. So you get 1 minus lambda squared, and then minus negative 1. Be careful. Minus negative 1 is plus 1. So this is the characteristic polynomial. Don't set it equal to 0. That's like how you find the roots of the characteristic polynomial, right? It's just asking for the polynomial itself. So don't give an equation where you say that it equals zero. Just give the polynomial. So you can just like wrap it up here and circle this polynomial, and that's your answer to A. Um, but later, like for part B, we have to find the actual eigenvalues of A. So we have to find the roots of this polynomial. So we're going to want to put it in the form like A lambda squared plus B lambda plus C. So we can use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to do that. So first, I, we can just box this up. That's our answer to part A. And then for part B, we want to find, it says find the eigenvalues of A, real and complex. And to do that, we're going to use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula, you need it in that special form. So let's rearrange this polynomial. We're going to FOIL this. So we're going to get lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1. That's by FOILing this. And then plus 1 again from this guy. And we're going to set this equal to zero so we can actually find the roots of this polynomial, which is by definition the eigenvalues. So then just one last step, let's combine these two ones. So we have lambda squared minus two lambda plus two equals zero. So from your algebra class in high school, this is very easy. You just do the quadratic formula, right? So the solution, lambda is equal to negative b, this guy, so two, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative two squared, minus 4 times a times c. Again, I, I'm assuming that you have this background already. And then you have to divide by 2 times a. Then a is a coefficient to lambda squared. So you just divide by 2. So then let's simplify this. Lambda equals 2 plus or minus square root 4 minus 8, right, over 2. Uh-oh, it looks like this discriminant is going to be negative, which means that you have complex roots. But that's OK. We're just going to keep pushing forward with the complex eigenvalues and you're going to see that the process is the same it's just a little hairier algebra a little bit more hairy algebra so then this is what uh, 2 plus or minus 2 times i over 2 or 1 plus or minus i so look those these are our eigenvalues one eigenvalue is 1 plus i and the other eigenvalue is 1 minus i so there we go here we go here's our two eigenvalues 1 plus i and 1 minus i that's our answer for part B. And then part C is, for each eigenvalue, find a corresponding eigenvector. Again, it's the same exact process, if you remember. So for part C, we just have to find a vector that satisfies a minus lambda i times our, our vector, this is going to be our eigenvector, equals 0. And watch the previous videos in this series if you don't remember where this comes from, but we just have to find a vector in the null space of a minus lambda i. So let's do that. Remember, you have to do it for each eigenvalue, though. So for lambda, let's just pick one. Let's pick the positive eigenvalue, meaning like 1 plus i. 
So for lambda equals 1 plus i, we're going to have our, our matrix A minus lambda i. What is that? Well, our original A was, let's see, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And we're just going to take from the main diagonal, we're going to subtract off a 1 plus i. So here we have 1 minus lambda, 1, negative 1, 1 minus lambda. Like I said, same exact process, it's just a little bit harder algebra. And then we're going to do this times v, our eigenvector, has to equal 0, 0. And we just have to solve this um, matrix equation for v. And to do that, first let's simplify up our, our matrix here, our matrix a minus lambda i. You can see we'll have some good cancellations. We get this 1 minus 1 is 0. So this top left entry is just i. Then we have 1, negative 1. Same thing down here, 1 minus 1 is 0. Oh, this should be a negative i, right? And then here we have 1 minus 1 plus i. So that's going to be negative i. And then this times v equals 0. So how do we find this v? Well, uh, you can put it in an augmented matrix and, and write the solution set to this equation in parametric vector form. That'll give you um, all the possible v's in a very rigorous way. So let's just do that. So how, do we, how did we solve this before when we didn't have complex stuff? Um, we're going to use the same approach. We just make an augmented matrix. And then we're going to row reduce it. Now here's the thing. How do you row reduce with complex entries? Uh, you, could, you could work with it the same way. You could try to get like a 1 up here. Like you could multiply the top row by i. You could multiply the top row by i and get this first entry would be negative i squared. And then negative i squared, that's negative times negative 1, which is positive 1. And you would get like a 1 up here in this pivot position. And you could continue like that. But there's like a shortcut that I just want to tell you guys. And this is very important. If you remember, we found lambda such that the determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0. And so if the determinant of, of this matrix here if we know that the determinant of it is 0, by the invertible matrix theorem, we can say a lot of other things about the matrix, too. We could say, for example, that the columns are linearly dependent. And if the columns of a 2 by 2 matrix are linearly dependent, that means the columns are scalar multiples of each other. Well, we could go through with the same logic about the row vectors and say that the row vectors are scalar multiples of each other. If the row vectors are scalar multiples of each other, can we just say that through some row operation, we can just get rid of the second row completely? and say that this, this augmented matrix is row equivalent to negative i, 1, 0, and then just 0, 0, 0 on the bottom. Can't we say that if the, if the rows are scalar multiples of each other? We could just find some appropriate scalar to scale row 2 by, or row 1 by, and then do row replacement and just get rid of that second row. So that's just a shortcut. If you don't want to go through that whole mess of like, oh my god, what, I have to multiply by a, a negative i, and how do I work with all these complex entries? That's a shortcut. Okay, so now we've gotten it here. Let's go one more step so that we can get a, a 1 up in the top left so we can get this in reduced row echelon form. So let's multiply by i. Let's scale the first row by i. If we do that, we get negative i squared, i, and 0, 0, 0, 0. And then this is, it's actually just equal to, not even row equivalent. It's equal to negative i squared is 1 because i is square root of negative 1 and then i 0 0 0 0 okay now we have this matrix in reduced or echelon form we can write the solution set to this equation here in parametric vector form by saying let's see x1 equals I move this i times x2 over to the right side remember it's the same exact process as before it's just now we have have to work with i's and then x2 is a free variable so x2 just equals x2 so then we can say our vector up here, v, oops, our vector v is just equal to x2 times negative i and 1. Right, so this is our solution set in parametric vector form. So any scalar multiple of the vector negative i1 is an eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 1 plus i. And if you really wanted to, you could check this, do like a times the vector negative i1 and you should get a vector which is 1 plus i times 
negative i1. You can prove to yourself that this is actually an eigenvector with that eigenvalue 1 plus i. Or you could just trust the process and assume you didn't make any mistakes. But you can see, so for example, here's one answer to part c. Let's scroll all the way back up, remind ourselves what is c asking. For each eigenvalue, find a corresponding eigenvector. So for the eigenvalue 1 plus i, we found this eigenvector. Any scalar multiple of this is an eigenvector. So we could say for an answer, negative i1, or we could say any scalar multiple. And so you could like multiply this by 2 or by 3 or by negative 1. Or you could, this is interesting, you could scale it by a complex number. So you could scale this by i, and you would get a different eigenvector. So if we pick x2 to be i, because x2 is a free variable, it could be anything. If we multiply this by i, we get another eigenvector, but it looks a little different because we're scaling by i. So then we would get negative i squared and i, which equals 1 and i. So here's one example. Here's another example. You can see that they don't look like scalar multiples of each other, but they are. So here's just two examples of eigenvectors that have eigenvalue 1 plus i. Now we have to do the same thing for lambda equals 1 minus i for the other eigenvalue because part c wants us to find an eigenvector corresponding to each eigenvalue. So, But here's a shortcut because we're already at 11 minutes and 30 seconds. So here's a shortcut. If you can... Uh, if you can find an eigenvector corresponding to one eigenvalue, the eigenvector corresponding to the complex conjugate eigenvalue is just the complex conjugate of the eigenvector. So what does that mean? Remember, if you have something a plus bi, here's a complex number, right? The complex conjugate is a minus bi. So the complex conjugate is you just take negative one times the imaginary part, okay? So you can see that this eigenvalue 1 minus i is the complex conjugate of our previous eigenvalue 1 plus i. And so here's the theorem. It says that the eigenvalue, sorry, the eigenvector corresponding to this complex conjugate eigenvalue 1 minus i is um, the complex conjugate of the eigenvector that we found for lambda equals 1 plus i. So we could pick any of these. Let's pick the first one. The complex conjugate of negative i1. Right? So if we know the eigenvector for lambda plus i, then we just immediately know the eigenvector for lambda minus i. It's the complex conjugate of this vector, negative i1. And so, but how do we find the complex conjugate of a vector? Well, you just go through each entry of the vector, and anywhere you see an imaginary part, you just take a negative. So this whole thing, the complex conjugate of this vector is just, we go through each entry, so the first entry. We take the imaginary part of the first entry, and we change the sign. So, neg so negative i becomes positive i. The second entry, we take the negative of any imaginary part. Well, there is no imaginary part. So the second entry stays the same. So there we go. We've found this vector is an eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 1 minus i. Okay, I hope that clears up eigenvectors and eigenvalues when they're uh, complex numbers. Um, it's really not as bad as a lot of students make it up to be. It's the same process, just a little bit more hairy algebra because you have to deal with i's.